So we are back at the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures in Los Angeles. I'm here with award-winning filmmaker Robert Townsend. Hello, Robert. Thank you again for having me. It's so great to have you here as we celebrate Black History Month. Tonight we're looking at soldier stories, and the next film, Sergeant Rutledge, is perhaps one of the most important stories on film about a black soldier. It's played by Woody Strode, who was such a majestic figure. And I wonder if you could talk about the first time you saw Woody Strode and the impression that he made on you. He was a force of nature. Every time he came on screen, his aura was larger than life. Mm. I mean, so I saw him initially in Once Upon a Time in the West with Henry Fonda. He's in it just a little bit, mm. but his presence is so large that it overshadowed the film for me. And then he was in Spartacus. Yes, and, yes. That's uh, the first time I saw him was in Spartacus. So first, let me say this. Mr. Portier was my godfather. Okay, so when I first got to Hollywood, I would ask, you know, I said, how did you get to have dignity in the, in the 50s? You know, when so many actors were shuffling and all of that, and he says, the power to say no. I chose my roles very carefully, but he also said there were men that wanted to change the game. Mm. And he says men like Norman Jewess and men, you know, like Richard Brooks, and he yes, named these, yes. these filmmakers yes. and producers, and so, when I think about this film that we're about to see now, John Fort's handprint is all over it because he wanted to make a statement about race relations in the army with people. And I think to see Woody Stroh play this man of color with such dignity and such reverence, you know, you watch him and you're glued watching him, but the things that they're talking about are still being talked about today. Because when you really think about it, like Mr. Portier would tell me, he says when he was shooting back in the 50s, he was the only black person on the stage. It was him and the shoeshine guy. So I'm like, wow. And he goes, I had to keep it together. Yeah. They might have pushed my button. So when I'm looking at Woody, I go like, what was it like on set? Like, it's one thing to watch this movie mm -hmm. and you're working with, you know, the legendary, you know, John Ford, but it's like he's playing a character that is caught up in racism and caught up in this world. And when he left the set, did he get really get caught up in it? Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's because such a good question. It's Absolutely. a real, it's a real, I mean, because when you go cut, everybody go home. Did he have to go home a different way? Mm. Could he stay at the same hotels? Mm. Did he have to stay in the black area? Right. So when I'm watching the movie, I'm like, He's saying such, you know, powerful stuff. Like they even talk about Lincoln and he goes like, you know, yeah, cause Lincoln freed the slaves, but that don't mean we free. And mm -hmm. there's some kind of line like that yes. that I go, whoa. So I look at the writers, the writers are not of color, but they wanted to get it right. Mm -hmm. So it goes back to Mr. Portier. There were these men yeah. who knew that the game was upside down and it wasn't fair. Mm. And they were doing everything they could to level the playing field. And it is the legendary John Ford. He created the first black action hero. Mm. That's what this is really That's about. That's absolutely true. He's the first yes. black action hero because this is the 60s yeah. and he is kicking butt, taking names. Yes. And what a risk it was for John Ford to cast Woody Strode because folks like Sidney Poitier would be considered potentially for a role like this. But he chose someone, star football player at UCLA, that athleticism, his stature, could have been intimidating to audiences, but also he's an actor who can bring such empathy. Yes, and I'm so glad you guys are showing this film because there's a whole new generation that need to know who Woody Strode was and the legacy of this, this gentle giant. Yes, thanks so much, Robert. Let's take a look. From 1960, here is Woody Strode in Sergeant Rutledge. We are back here at the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures in Los Angeles, and I'm with Robert Townsend, and we're talking about soldier stories, and especially Sergeant Rutledge. And I wonder if we could talk a little bit about the Western component of this, because there haven't really been that many Black Westerns on film. You know, upstairs we have an exhibition called Regeneration, Black Cinema 1898 to 1971, and we pay tribute to Herb Jeffries, Yes. Who appeared in Black Cast Westerns back in the late 1930s. Yes. But there have been few representations of that really rich history of Black participation in the West. But I think when we look at this film tonight, we're getting a rare glimpse that it's Hollywood behind it, like real Hollywood yeah. is behind it. So when you, you know, put 
a John Ford's name into the mix. He's the guy who does westerns. He does stagecoach. He does those movies. So the film is well executed on so many levels, but the difference is you've got the centerpiece being Woody Strode. And you've got all of those black soldiers that surround him. And this was a moment in time mm. because who greenlit this to say, we're going to have an all black cavalry that the characters are going to be surrounded by. And we're going to go in and out of this world. So I really have to applaud all the filmmakers, producers, everybody behind it, because I know this movie was a moment in time. When you think about the 60s, you think about Martin Luther King, you think about the civil rights movement and all of those players fighting, fighting for something. And then you have this movie in the middle of that that is talking about those same issues. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's why this film is really special mm -hmm. because it lets you know back then there were certain powers in Hollywood that were like, we need to talk about this. Yes. We need to have a discussion about this. And I think this film is a beautiful piece to start discussion about. Well, they're in the army, but they're not being treated the same way. Yes, and John Ford recognizing the history of the Buffalo Soldiers who, you know, after the Civil War, were patrolling the West. I wonder what you think about the way that it also represents Native American characters, because you know, that feels was, rather conventional Well, in well some you know, ways. so let me say this. That did bother me, mm -hmm. because uh, in the, the movies, the Westerns that I grew up on, the Indians were always the bad guys. And it's like, we never knew their story. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, like right now, I, you, you know, like I really champion new voices in cinema. You know, like the part of my brain as a professor, I champion my students from all over the world mm. because there's these little dreamers that have things to say. And I tell them all the time, your voice is important because if we only hear history told from one perspective or one voice, we'll never know the truth. Mm -hmm. Well, you certainly have celebrated diverse voices across the course of your career. Well, Can you talk you. about what you're working on these days? You know, uh, I have been directing like nonstop. So uh, I did Best Man limited series for mm -hmm. Peacock and I did Kaleidoscope with Giancarlo Esposito for uh, Netflix. And uh, my episodes, I got to shoot, kill, bop, bop, bop. It was just the best time ever. And then uh, I've been in the Force universe with uh, uh, um, Gary and uh, 50 Cent. And so uh -huh. that's coming out. And then I'm working on a movie now uh, for me and my daughter, Sky Townsend. Mm. She's on the Black Lady Sketch Show, and she's starring in a movie right now for uh, Paramount. So, you know, I'm, I, there's a lot going on. That's beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Robert, for being with us to celebrate Black History Month. Well, thank you so much for having me. The movies that you have selected are some of my favorites, and I want the world to know about them. And there's so many channels and so many things to watch and for the audience to have uh, uninterrupted viewing of these films has been amazing. Thank you so much, Robert. Thank you. So sadly, we're saying goodbye to Robert. You're saying goodbye to me? For the moment. Oh, okay, okay, I'm, I'll be back, I'll moment. be back. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm just heading out, I'm just heading out. She's saying goodbye to me, goodbye. <laughs> but our celebration of Black History Month will continue next week. Up next, though, we have Eddie Muller with Noir Alley. Stay with us. Goodbye. <laughs>